up kiddos, Brandon here. I'm sorry I haven't made a video in a couple days, I'm sure all 89 of you are worried sick about me. I do apologize for worrying you guys, but it's just been a mess since I moved out to Raccoon City. Move out to the most isolated, beautiful Midwest American city, they said. Now the whole place is infested with zombies, it smells like death. I thought I paid taxes, so like this doesn't happen. Seriously, I pay taxes, so this doesn't happen. Wait a second, this is really weird. Something isn't right here. Anyway, I'd be lying if I said there weren't any signs. My friends thought it was pretty weird that I wanted to move here, and my cameraman even asked if I had ever heard of a game called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. I told him I had never heard of the game, I packed up my sh and bounced out of there, and now I find out Capcom is remaking this game and it's coming out at the beginning of April? God damn it, I'm so bad at my job. Well, I figure there's no better time to learn about Resident Evil 3 than when I'm in a constant state of fear and danger for my life. Man, I feel all weird. Uh, some Capcom game called Resident Evil 2? Like a mad case of deja vu. Uh, almost like I've done this before. So, Resident Evil 3 is the third game in the extremely popular franchise Resident Evil. There's been seven mainline sequels to the game series now, and literally so many spin-offs and hilariously bad movies that even if you have never played one of them before, I guarantee you the name Resident Evil bears some evil residents in your brain somewhere. And although I haven't spent much time with Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, some of the earliest gaming memories I have are from watching my dad and uncle play through the original at the tender age of 5. Then reliving those nightmares when I attempted to play through it myself. What can I say, I was a snowflake. After that, I realized I wasn't much into horror games at the time, so I didn't pick up another until Resident Evil 4 came out on the Wii back in 2007. By that time, the game had been out for a couple years now, and since I didn't have many Wii games at the time, I decided to pick it up and give horror another shot, and to the dismay of my Christian mother, I absolutely fell in love. Resident Evil 4 was a game changer. Not only had I just jump-started my love for all things horror, Groovy. they threw out those awkward controls and fixed camera angles for a more modern, behind-the-shoulder camera angle, fully realized 3D environments for Leon to sport around in, and changing out regular old zombies with a creepy tentacle cult. That game was f***ing sweet. With all that being said, in my opinion Capcom went ahead and ruined this high by making the next couple titles in the series straight up action games, totally removing most of the survival horror elements that made the series so popular in the first place. While they can be fun action movie romps, it is highly recommended you play these titles with a buddy. They aren't bad games, just mediocre at best. And luckily, we aren't here to talk about any of those games today. With the upcoming release of Resident Evil 3 Remake, people are hella stoked to jump back into the blood-soaked streets of Raccoon City, especially thanks to the return to form we got back in Resident Evil 7 a few years ago. Now, I'm sure you all are very curious to know about how Resident Evil 3 Remake stacks up to the original PS1 title. Resident Evil 3 was originally released on the PlayStation 1 back in September 1999 to slightly less good review scores than its predecessor, but eventually reaching cult status and commonly appearing in arguments among friends about whether or not it's a superior game to Resident Evil 2. While the game is not perfect, especially up to modern standards, the clunky tank controls, fixed camera angles, and constant inventory management do wonders for creating a tense, albeit sometimes frustrating environment. And the game continues to be one of the most popular survival horror experiences out there. Thankfully from what I've played of the game and seen online, the overall atmosphere and game mechanics stay true to the PS1 title, and even though they take a lot of creative liberties with the plot, they hit a lot of the same story beats and overload your senses with references to the original, as well as other Capcom... Capcom? <laughs> as well as some other Capcom franchises along the way. The demo picks up right after Jill Valentine boards a train with a couple umbrella Special Forces guys, one of them being the Splatoon leader Mikhail Victor, and Carlos, who literally looks like he just walked off stage at some 90s boy band concert. Victor explains to you that him and his team were here to rescue civilians, but by the time they got here to Raccoon City, everything was shut down and isolated already. If the civilians were still alive, it is only a matter of time until they die, or worse, undie. It's then revealed that they are working on a plan to get said train moving and to rescue the survivors that they have found, but they're gonna need Jill to run some errands for them first. Jill reluctantly accepts, but not without making a jab at the corporate overlords who got her here first. Ha! Suck it, capitalism! Jill makes her way out of the train station, but not without reading some seriously boring papers and eating enough green herbs to easily lose every ounce of moral fiber she had in her. She's all lazy and... Boring. Eventually making her way up to the neon-soaked streets of Raccoon City. The lighting effects in Resident Evil 3 are off the chain and are frequently manipulated to give off some of the most eerie looking corridors I have ever tread down. Right off the bat you're going to notice a lot heavier emphasis on combat in this game compared to the one that came before it. There are a lot more opportunities in this game to mow zombies down with various weapons, but don't think that means you can be careless with your ammunition. 
All your favorite survival mechanics are intact here, everything from inventory management to a crafting system. While some hardcore fans may prefer the fixed camera angles and put up with the controls for the sake of horror, I think that bringing the camera back and having more immediate control over the character really puts you in the feet of Jill Valentine and allows for them to pull off some set pieces that come together nicely when they are right up in your face. For instance, the nemesis is still wandering the streets of Raccoon City and looking to murder you and everyone you know, and he is terrifying! Once Jill solves a couple puzzles and wanders the streets a bit, you then find the fire hose you need to get past the blazing fire that is blocking your path. Upon returning, the big guy himself shows up and tries to stop you at any cost. And by that I mean he will literally follow you around the streets of the city, one time even following me all the way to a separate part of the map, scaring the absolute shit out of me. The one thing that really sticks out to me when it comes to this remake is the atmosphere. Between the crisp sound design, absolutely insane lighting effects, and well placed set pieces, it all comes together to amp up the creep factor, really giving you the feeling that you are walking around a city in despair slowly solving puzzles in your way and blowing the brains out of the backs of zombies' heads. This franchise has really taken off again since Resident Evil 7, and I think they have really learned from their mistakes in the past, focusing less on flashy anime action scenes and more on what makes the game so popular and scary in the first place. On top of that, the gameplay is silky smooth. The camera and shooting mechanics really feel like second nature and are right in line with what we have come to expect with the team behind these games. Hot damn, I'm pumped after getting a chance to play the game and talking to you guys about... Oh sh**, they're right outside. Uh, uh, well I hope we're all on the same page about Resident Evil 3 now? I think they found me, I can hear them right outside. That being said, I need to get the hell out of here and back to Colorado. Wait, I've definitely done this before, this is really weird. Ah, God, what the f*** is happening? Ah, God, damn it. What the hell is happening, computer? You passed out on the floor there during the show. And you were just gonna leave me there? How long was I out for? I think we maybe should finish the show and then I can figure out why you passed out on the floor like a giant baby afterward. Jeez, okay, god. Well, that's about all the news I have for you guys today, so I'm Brandon. This was another episode of The Shit You Care About. Remember, if you like what I do, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more, and stay safe out there. Have a kick-ass week.